dropping the hammer. No, you're not. What? 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 Wait, I, I can only really articulate what's you know, what, what Bubble Wallace like means to the sport right now is like back when I was younger, you know, my teenage years or whatever. You know, T Tiger Woods was the, the the big thing in golf. And at the time, I was annoyed by it because I didn't understand why everyone was making such a big deal about this one golfer. Um, now, I now realize, that looking at it through the lens of NASCAR, golf was also a very, very white sport at the time. Right. Um, so, and so he was the one guy. And it happens to be that one guy was very good at what he did. Um, and when, pe when people want, like, want to say that Bubba Wallace is like the Tiger Woods of NASCAR. He might not be as good as what Tiger Woods was during that time, but he still represents the same thing. Um, and Tiger Woods was able to, to chart a new course or help golf chart a new course. Um, hopefully Bubba Wallace is able to also do that. Um, we, we, we don't know when his next win is going to be. Uh, could, could I well I don't think it's going to be at the Roval, um and I, and I don't think the Walls would say it would be at the Roval. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I think he even said it in a press conference. He was like, "It's my favorite track." Nah. <laughs> yeah, and, and let me say, I think everyone should be excited about this, even the peep, even the you know sunglasses and truck crowd. Um, <laughs> but because. <laughs> Like so, so Tiger was he changed golf in two ways. One is because he you know brought a new face to it. The second is he brought boatloads of sponsorship money, yeah, and, and R and D, yeah. like Nike Golf for I don't know how long was like like drove R and D in golf and completely changed like the ball that was used. It, it, it like it's destroyed these old classic courses because now now there's these players with this new technology that can like just take like a par four and drop it on the green. Right. Um, and so they're having to like change the layout of these golf courses on these classic courses because of that. Right. And it's, a lot of that has to do with the R and D and like Bubba Wallace, first of all, he's an exciting driver to watch. I'm not saying he's as good as a Dale Earnhardt or Dale Earnhardt Jr., but when he's on super speedways, when he's on short tracks, he drives like them. If you painted all the cars white and like or in just had them all going around, you could see what car he was in, you know, like because of the way he drives. He's one of those drivers. Kyle Larson's the same way. They just have a sway that they drive that you see, and those people stand out. And I think that part of that, I think, is like he has that sort of ability to maneuver on super speedways. That's going to bring a lot of fans. That's going to bring a lot of money. He's going to have a lot of TV time. And all of that is good for the sport as a whole, because right now, money is going the opposite direction in the sport. Yeah. And has been oh. for two decades. Yeah. Well, when when your team is sponsored by McDonald's, uh, Dr Pepper, uh, Columbia, um, who who else am I missing, guys? Like who else is on that? Uh, Root Insurance. Yeah, Root um, Insurance. Which that's 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 very new money for NASCAR. This this right. is their first. This is their first time uh, sponsoring anything in, nationally in sports that I'm aware of. Um, so like he he's bring he's bring he's getting legacy sponsors like mcdonald's mm -hmm. and he's and he's bringing in new ones like columbia and root and that's what the sport needs and i could easily uh, see him being like the face of toyota or you know at least their you know that initiative because he's well he he, he right now i mean technically he is he he he, he has that toyota commercial commercial all right oh, yeah. so there you um, go like what, oh, I, like i was gonna say like you know denny hamlin it, you know he's got a little bit of a legacy there but yeah, for it, sure. It, it's right now. It's Bubba and Kyle Busch. They're yeah, they're, they're yeah. the ones who are in the commercials for Toyota right now. And like Bubba's yeah. got that one with the, the the girl who's a kart racer and, and that oh. one which has been airing all year. I love oh, that for, commercial. Also, yeah. DoorDash. DoorDash. How how did I forget DoorDash? All right, the uh, the main sponsor of the car. Yeah. <laughs> well, how it's it's right one. underneath our noses. Um, right. Literally. So <laughs> so and, and now yeah, Door DoorDash is also an official like partner of NASCAR now. Um, right. so and that they just uh did that created that thing where you can uh, yeah, that NASCAR, serve it, that, 
You refuel, yeah. I think. Yeah. You, refuel. yeah, you can get all you can get the food the, the track side uh yeah. concessions now delivered to your house. Yeah. I gotta try that one of these days. They, I haven't got they, a chance to yet. They they have no partners uh in northwest Arkansas. I, yeah. I, I'm, unfortunately, yeah, to report, I'm, un, unfortunate to report. Yeah. Um, but hey, it's a start. Um, I think but that's a clear sign that DoorDash wants to be here for a while. Uh-huh. Um and with Bubba winning this race, you know, that, that releases pressure not just on himself as a driver, but on uh, the organization and be able to okay we can we can do this we're not we're not just here to 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 earn attention points we 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 can accomplish stuff and so we are worth the investment um and we're gonna have monster energy next year with kurt bush and uh-huh. what maybe whatever other p- partners they bring along i don't um, know why i just laugh at that like i, I just as soon as you say Kurt Bush and Monster Energy, I just pick, picture that flat brim hat and I just laugh. <laughs> it's really <laughs> weird that that has been a partnership for this long. Wow. But that I was... don't. You look at all the other Monster Energy athletes. You know Haley Deegan, Ty. Um, you know all the guys in extreme sports, and then Kurt right, Bush, right? Like right, 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 forty-year-old right, right. dad of the group, but he's dressed up like the extreme sports guys. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> he looks like he's cosplaying as a drifter. That's what it is. Yeah. He looks like how he should have looked in 2001. Oh my goodness! There's a, I, and I think we all say it every time we hear Kurt Busch get into a situation. He gives one of those diplomatic interviews. The youngins don't just do not understand what we say when they, we say Kurt Busch has come so far. Yeah. We all saw 2002 to like 2009 Kurt Busch. You would not understand. Like you really would not. Like this is Kurt Busch. Like, yeah. He, yeah. He, he, he has become a new man in the last yeah. five years, like, especially since like, he got I'm married. Surprised. I'm, I'm surprised yeah. Bob still doesn't have a, Restrain an order against him <laughs> just for a little while, a little while longer. Who? Yeah. Bob oh, Pockers. Bob oh. Pockers. <laughs> that was got suspended. What the second time? Something yeah, like that. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, but, but I think he fussed him out at Dover. I think it was. Yeah, it was. It was after I think the Cup race. Yeah. I just don't understand how anyone could ever say something negative to Bob Pockers. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Bob is Bob, Bob I've met Bob. Has, he's way has, too nice. Yeah, he has he has he has thick skin. Uh but yeah. when, when when even he has his limits, and when you get snarky, kind of flippant Bob on Twitter, that that makes my day. Yeah, uh, that is the best Bob. <laughs> yeah, the few times sassy Bob comes out, you, you kind of sit up and take notice. And I he had he had to do that a couple of times, you know, talking about Bubba when he had some of uh, you know. As James over there said, uh, glass, uh, sunglasses and truck Twitter uh, got a bit sideways about Bubba. He snapped off on some people. You know, Bob, Bob's got some Twitter fingers if you push him far uh-huh. enough. Takes a little bit, though, to actually get him there. All right. So before we move on, uh, I think it should be noted um, that yes, yesterday Darren Ravel uh, reported that Cir- Circle, Circle B diecast had said that the race win diecast from Bubba Wallace from Talladega was on the trajectory to being the second most popular uh, diecast for this year behind uh, Kevin Harvick's uh, Gravedigger car from Nashville er- early in this season. And I just like that alone. If if your top two diecasts are and Chase Elliott's not among them. Uh, that that's that that's a big deal. Uh, if, if it's if it's Kevin Harvick and Bubba Wallace's first win die cast, um, so that 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 I really think that's this that's at least this one signifier to the 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 magnitude of what happened on Monday. Um, have you, you have you guys pre-ordered yours yet? I have. Yeah, I am. I did. I'm going to. Yeah, I just got it. Probably once we get done here. I just had to fire up the old Circle B account. But the fact that that car is, you know, pre-selling that well, it just shows how much Bubba moves the needle and how important his success is going to be for the sport going forward. 
Oh, a, a, oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, again, I, I. But really, guys, it, it, it's the, it's because of McDonald's. That that's why this whole thing that all this is a big deal. <laughs> well, I mean, that helps too. For twenty five years, just... Jimmy Spencer at Talladega won with McDonald's. Think think of all the drivers who've had McDonald's on their hood for at least one race since nineteen ninety five and did not win a points race. Bill Elliott. Bill Elliott. Never won a points race. Ross Chastain. Never won a points. Andy Houston. Elliot Sadler. Casey Kane. Ross Chastain. Ross Chastain. Ross Chastain. (laughs) Jamie Jamie McMurray. Ross Chastain. (laughs) (laughs) Ross will have, hopefully Ross will get, get, have more opportunities with McDonald's on the car. But like for, I, I don't want, Part of me wants to know, but part of me doesn't want to know just how much money McDonald's has spent on NASCAR sponsorship in the last 25 years um, and not gotten a win until Monday. Because, like, for, for a sponsor to stick around that long without them, that kind of payoff, that's they, they see something in the sport. So and, the return on investment must be immaculate for them to stay around that long say. without yeah. winning. Like they have to be making so much off of their advertising mm-hmm. or McDonald's is at this point where they have so much throwaway money to where they, they might not even care. Like, Oh, Maybe. we didn't win again. All right, whatever. So slight sidebar. I'll try to be quick on marketing. So you, when you have companies like Coca-Cola and, uh, mcdonald's they don't really have reliable like like they do have some metrics but for the most part the only thing they're trying to do is maintain the status quo of having that high level of brand recognition so in that like mm-hmm. that kind of advertising is seen more as an investment in the future rather than we want people to go go get mcdonald's after the race so they will just you know as long as they feel like it's working they'll keep putting money into it Right, that makes sense, and <laughs> and and that's the thing because I think one of the kids on, and I say kids like they're actual kids, but uh, the teenagers, I'll put it that way, on Twitter said, you know, I really didn't think sponsorship in NASCAR worked, you know, until Bubba won, you know, now I want McDonald's, and <laughs> I, I started, yeah, I started thinking, you know, about all of the things, you know, in everyday life, like. You know, when I was a kid, I was a Jeff Gordon fan, so I was drinking Pepsi, you know, uh, as I got older, you know, now when you're putting stuff into your car, you know, you look for the stuff that, you know, the basically your favorite sport, you know, puts into their cars. And, uh, you know, and it was like I said, you know, I think this is the best time as far as sponsorship goes for people to be able to reach out through like social media and be able to say, oh, I used, you know, uh, Quaker State because I saw it on uh, the Benedetto's car or, you know, I went to, you know, you know, I refinanced my home with Ally because it was on Alex Bowman's car, you know, or Valvoline with uh, anybody from Hendrick. So, you know, I... For me, for someone who I've been, you know, had this big gap of viewership, the mm-hmm. only current driver that I just immediately associate with a brand is Denny Hamlin. I yeah. drive past a FedEx every day, and I just think Denny Hamlin. So, uh, and, and I dri- well, but I drive past UPS because there's a UPS distribution right next door, and I think Del Jarrett. Mm-hmm. I still yeah, I, think we want to drive the truck. Yes. <laughs> we want to race the truck, sorry. Yeah. I was, uh, I, they never they did use it as a pace car, did they? I really wanted them to use it as a pace car. Uh, the only time I remember them rolling it out was when Jarrett was retiring and they had him roll around the track one time in the actual oh, okay. UPS the, truck. But the they never the, like, the used it as a pace car or anything. The All-Star Race. Yeah. So that, that, if there's ever been a payoff to a marketing campaign, that was it. Um, <laughs> so, But like, yeah, Denny Hamlin, up until this year, Every single one of his points races, he'd been sponsored by FedEx. And but now there's what what's it what's it called? Offer pad. Offer pad. That that's yeah. gotten a couple of races at least. So but yeah, I mean that's that's fifth that's 15, 14, 15 years of commitment from FedEx to one driver. And you don't right. see you don't see that anymore. 
like yeah. like yeah. when when Lowe's went away from Jimmy Johnson, that was like, oh wow, that that's that's a big deal. Right. Um, right. But but now but Ally is is seems to be even more committed uh, to sponsoring the 48 oh, team yeah. more than Lowe's was. It seems. I like. still I still feel like I'm doing something wrong when I go to Home Depot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Like, but, uh, <laughs> like, but it seems like unfortunately, like, what, I, I guess we'll close out this part of part of the show um, with, with this talk about sponsorship. Um, it one issue I see with NASCAR sponsorship is there's not enough sponsors that are like products that you could just spend your disposable income on. Like, right. there, other than that, like you know, like, which is good things that you got McDonald's and Dr. Pepper or Monster Energy. These are things that you could just like go to a convenience store and get um, uh, other stuff like takes long-term commitments or it's I still don't know what this is. I assume <laughs> I assume insurance. <laughs> I, th- I don't even remember what Clover is, but yeah, it, it, we lost that when teams had to put together like those multiple you know, limited time sponsors to just keep the doors open. And hopefully, you know, with Bubba bringing all this sponsorship money in, I think DoorDash is pretty recognizable with him now. We'll start seeing that a little bit more. All right. And and another thing to say about that, too, if you think about it, the amount of blind faith it took companies like, like we say, like Root Insurance, uh, Dr. Pepper and Columbia, even for them to, you know, jump on board with Bubba, you know, and a new team, you know, they know who Bubba is, but you're going into a race where, you know, you don't know exactly what's going to happen. You know, he may do a little bit better than what he did in the 43 car. But, you know, you look at Columbia when they had their first race of the season earlier this year at Las Vegas, when he had the issue, I think it was with the power steering or whatnot. And, you know, that's their first time on a car, you know, with 2311. I know he did the, I think it was a bass fishing car last season with uh, Richard Petty Motorsports. But, you know, you want to see your car up front and doing good and, but, you know, especially with how qualifying and practice are set up now, uh, with there being none, you know, it's, uh, it, it, it's a hard way, a hard barometer to guess, you know, is my car going to run up front all day? You know, are we going to get into an accident? You know, are we going to see a return on investment? Will our car be up where the cameras are? So that, you know, uh, NBC or Fox or, you know, w- one of the other stations mention it. So, uh, but for them to step up and say, oh, okay, we want to be on this. We want to be part of this. We know what Bubba can be capable of. But for them to actually be able to see tangible results now, especially McDonald's, who, you know, were, they, they back some high profile names and even if you, and I don't mean to keep kind of dragging on and talking about this, but, um, you know, even if you remember, I think last season or the season before last, uh, I know when I think he ran one race for McDonald's, but that was only because at the last minute they decided they were going to come over and sponsor him. And that was, I think, I want to say 2019, because I know Larson – had a car similar to his, but I think it was like a reverse paint scheme. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I remember the I remember the car looked really weird. It was yeah. not a great it was not a great scheme. It was like here, just no. put these stickers on. Just 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 put the stickers well, on. Well, orig- originally, like he he would be sponsored at Atlanta, if, like by but it wasn't the national McDonald's. It was like a local group right. of McDonald's that put, put stores money, that put yeah. So I think that that was, I think that's the one you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. So, um, all right. So let's let's move on, guys. Uh, we got the Roval this weekend. Uh, you guys ready to to, to go roveling? 
Chaos. I can't wait. This race yeah. has been just climactic every year. And I knew it was going to be chaos the first year, and it was. And I think one of the most hilarious moments is still went off. It was like, I think it was in the first race, although this happens a couple of times now. Um, late restart, and like half the field just drives into the turn one oh, wall. Oh, those are the best. I love it. <laughs> Yeah, ever, as as I believe Kyle Bush put it, we all followed Brad because Kozlowski off a cliff. Um. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> so that does get to the question I was going to ask, which is, who is who? what driver is going to blow turn one on the first lap? On the first, uh, well, no, no one did it on the first lap, um, but it was done on a restart that first year. Um, yeah. Who would, who's going to, who's going to, Probably Bubba uh, the way he goes at road courses. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. hey, then, being then, then, he'll, then he'll salvage like a eleven. Hey, he he hey. he had a good day at Sonoma this year. So hey, he did. nobody he did. nobody blows um Roval um turns like Michael McDowell. <laughs> True. <laughs> Daytona Roval. He he, he he had a tire first problem. turn. Uh, and then uh, a tire, it was a tire problem. And then what was the one where he uh, the track came up and he got launched into the air? Oh, oh man! The hazards. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. It was recently, I don't remember where that yeah, was. Uh, he, I remember oh, he got oh, 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 oh! Indianapolis, Indianapolis. Yeah, Indianapolis. Yeah. It wasn't. It, it oh, wasn't, oh, yeah! Earlier this year, when the stupid um the, the curb, curb came up came and up. they removed yeah, it, the curb, the curb came and, up. Yeah. and then just yeets half the field. <laughs> And then they were like, huh, let's do this again next year. It wasn't the Please track. Get a stronger like, curve next time. The, 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 that whole thing was not an indictment of that track. It, that was just a fluke. So anyway, so like this, this is an elimination race. Uh, so undoubtedly, there, so, someone, someone's going to get over their head at some point. Because, okay, right now the four guys are under, who are beneath the cut line are – Kevin Harvick minus nine, Christopher Bell minus twenty eight, but then you have William Byron who's minus forty four and Alex minus fifty two, um, and they they wrecked out at Talladega, so they they have to win. Like there there's no ifs and or buts. They're not getting in on points. They have to win. But on the flip side, uh, the opposite end of the this the the playoff picture is fascinating because Kyle Larson who has six wins, 15 stage wins, and 60 playoff points, uh, is only 22 points to the good. <laughs> and he, he's in second right now. Um, so it is possible that Kyle Larson might not advance to the, to the round of eight if something Blue, weird happened. He had double the points of anyone but um, Denny Hamlin. And one car spins. <laughs> <laughs> and now, now he may be out of the playoffs. Just an hour. He's got to be thanking. He's got to be thanking his lucky stars that he has those fifteen stage points, or he'd be in a much mm-hmm. worse position right now. Those fifteen stage wins, sorry, or he'd been in a much worse position. So, like, I, I, I okay. Who do you guys? Okay, who's going to do the thing? Who's going to go over their head and screw up their chances of advancing their playoffs? Will it be uh, Christopher Bell, who's negative twenty eight? Or Kyle Larson, who's plus 22. Oh, wow. I think out of those two, it would have to be. See, but this is the thing. They both have a road course win this year. You know, Christopher Bell got their first one at the uh, Daytona road course. Yeah. Um, and Larson. But see, Larson's history at at the uh, at the Roval. Yeah, he hasn't always had the best finishes, except for the one year where I think he was able to stay in the playoffs because Jimmy Johnson, uh, when he and Truex got together. Yes, <laughs> the, the, when he when he crossed the finish line in a demolished car after bouncing off the, the the wall of turn four. I remember I remember that the tattered remains of what used to be a Chip Ganassi race car just coming off the final turn trying to get in the playoffs as Truex is just sitting there. Yeah, like yeah. stay in it. Stay in it. But yeah, he he didn't he didn't he was he did didn't compete in that race uh last year. All so right. uh so he, he so he yeah. only has 
two results. I don't know what his second one was. Uh, but yes, he does have multiple road course wins uh, this year, um, including Watkins Glen. And oh, I, that's right. Yeah, he did. Um, yeah. What was the so and Sonoma, Sonoma. So, um, but yeah, yes. But so, guys, it like g- give me your votes. Who's most likely to go over their head? I think it's going to be Christopher Bell, only yeah. because Kyle Larson doesn't have to do that much. He He's been great at road courses all season long. So he just does what he's normally done at the road courses, which is basically chase down his teammate Chase Elliott all day when they're probably going to be up, you know, in the top five. He's going to get into the playoffs. He's going to get into the next round, no sweat. I think it's Christopher Bell that's going to have to push to get in there. I think he's going to be the one that will make the mistake. Okay. Bell? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm the more I'm thinking about it, I'm saying Christopher Bell. And the reason is if you think about it, and like Daryl said, pretty much uh Kyle can, you know, Kyle's gonna have to work his way up to the front a little bit, you know, with him having the accident last week at Dega. Yeah. I, I'm not sure of the uh have they released the uh lineup yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I'll actually go through it right now. Uh Starting from the poll, Denny Hamlin. Uh, Brad Keselowski is second. Joe Logano, third. Christopher Bell, fourth. Oh, okay. uh, Martin Truex Jr., fifth. Brian Blaney, sixth. Kevin Harvick, seventh. Chase Elliott, eighth. Kyle Busch, ninth. Kyle Larson, tenth. William Byron, eleventh. Alex Bowman, twelfth. And our, our race winner from Monday, Bubba Wallace, will start fifteenth. All right. Yeah, so, I mean, Christopher Bell, he... It's going to depend on how Larson comes up through the field from behind a little bit. But, you know, I think he's probably going to be on the defense a little bit. But it's just going to depend on how the race plays out. I think early stage-wise, both of them will be calm. But when we get to that third stage and, you know, we're finding out how many points, you know, it's going to take to get to that next round, I think uh, I really and I and I hate to say it about Chris, but I, I think he's probably gonna fold under the pressure. He's either gonna, you know, drive off uh, in the turn one, or you know, it's some some sort of way he, he's gonna get sent by somebody, and it might be a chain reaction crash as is normal, but. We'll see. All right. Uh, so I think I think the, the I think we were asking the wrong question. I don't think it's who's going to screw up. I think who, it's going to be who's going to get dumped. Oh yes. Because I, I see along the list, there's a whole lot of people that are very it's consistent payback. drivers. So I, well, I, I, well, I, well, well, we're talking about the right two drivers, really. Yeah. Because as far as we know, they haven't settled their whole feud from post Watkins Glen. Uh, so w- w- if it comes down to Kyle, Kyle Larson with the oh, lead right. going into that final turn and, and Christopher Bell's second. Uh, I think Christopher Bell's going to send him. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Most definitely. So, all right, let's, let's, I guess, get your race picks in guys who will win the f- fourth. Yeah. Fourth annual. NASCAR Cup Series race on the Charlotte Roval. Let's start with you, Daryl. Think you can't go wrong with a Chase Elliott pick at a road course. I mean, he's been electric at these ever since he got his first win at Watkins Glen. He won here after stuffing it in the tire barriers before. So I got to go with Chase Elliott. He's going to win his way into the next round. All right. Crow, you next. So... I'm not going off past performance at road courses. Um, I am going to go with Ryan Blaney because I think it's going to be someone in in the playoffs that wins. I think it's going to be someone that's pushing harder but doesn't have everything to lose. Well, he, he obviously he can lose and get kicked out, but um, and I just think that he's got it in him at this point. I think he's got enough momentum that he feels like, but he still thinks, feels like he needs to do something. Okay. Well, well his brakes will go out. 
Um, let's see. Um, I, I want to go with. I, I think I'll go with Denny, and I, and the reason I say Denny is because Denny's been consistent on the road courses. I'm not sure of. And like we say, we don't want to go by past performances too much, especially at the Roval, which isn't technically a natural road course as much as, you know, like Sonoma and Watkins Glen are. But, uh, you know, he was up front when they were at Indy. And like I say, I hate to use that. But, uh, you know, I, I kind of expect, and especially with him starting up front, he'll want to do what he can to protect the lead. And, build up some more points before he goes into the next round. So maybe it'll probably be a repeat winner, you know, from this, uh, this round. And if that's the case, you know, I'm inclined to say Denny. Okay. I'm going to take a shock the world pick guys. Uh, I'm taking Alex Bowman who entered this Ooh. race minus 52 Ooh. after having basically the playoffs from hell. Um, and I, 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 I have good reason for this pick. In three starts on the Roval, he's never finished outside the top ten. He finished fourth in 2018, and in 2019, the year where Chase Elliott, you know, went nose first into the tire barrier and charged back to the front, Alex Bowman was second. Uh, and last year, in 2020, uh, he was eighth. Um, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking the Shock the World to win his way into the playoffs, uh, Alex Bowman. All right, Alex Bowman, Ryan Blaney, Chase Elliott, and Denny Hamlin. Those are our picks. Um, we'll see how those pan out on Sunday. Uh, I also think Kurt Busch is going to drive through the tra- drive through the grass and it won't affect him. There we go. Because that, that seems to <laughs> yes. be a thing. Okay. All right, guys. So let's, let's close this thing out. Uh, Daryl, where, where can uh, everyone find you on the interwebs? Where, they can, where can they find your work? Well, you can find me on Twitter at DKJunior12. It's usually where I am uh, most of the time. You can also check out uh, at Extra Mile IESR. That's where I do my podcast, The Extra Mile, which Daniel has been on uh, before. Thank you so much for joining me there as well. And also, if you want to, you know, check out me in my day job, uh, Southern Maryland News, that's where I write covering Charles County um, here in Maryland. A lot of good things going on down there. And other than that, uh, mainly just on Twitter these days, uh, enjoying the races and uh, providing some of the snark when people get out of line, much like Bob Powers. <laughs> All right. Bill? Yeah, well, you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, that's where I spend a good Three fourths of my day, never fourth doing work. But uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Phil and Espanol. Uh, you know, just if that doesn't work, just search Phil Spain. I'm pretty much one of the only Phil Spains on there. But uh, you can also check me out over at Pitbox Press. I should have said that a little bit earlier. Uh, me and a few friends got together and made a. Uh, nascar website you can check us out over there at pitbox press we've been doing race reviews and articles and things like that so uh, we try to update that every day uh, with as much information as we can so look out for that and look for more uh, coming out probably start of next season so we're really excited about where that's going all right and you can follow me on Twitter at Daniel McFadden. Uh, and you can follow Crow at DTH Crow on Twitter. Uh, I, might, go, I might be post- posting stuff because I've recently bought an excessive number of um, Hot Wheels size die casts. And so here is <laughs> number 23. And as I showed earlier, Ross Chastain. Ross but. Chastain. Uh, um, so I, I also bought a little, little nice little photography wheel thing. So I'm gonna be posting some of the diecast on Twitter, and no one will comment on them, but it'll make me happy. I've created a monster, guys. So uh, after after over 15 years not watching the sport, he is back and he is spending money. Um. Well, not just NASCAR. I mean, his little sprint car. Oh, cool. nice. And there's the. Uh, Carne asada. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
I, I love still, it. I still don't know what that is. Um, but anyway, that's where you all can find us. But before we go, I need to I need to pimp out my new project. Uh, this week I launched a a brand new uh, movie podcast uh, called Catching Up with Aaron and Daniel. Uh, it, it's it's uh, the mission of this podcast is uh, me and my friend Aaron Cohorst, who was a friend from high school. We were drama geeks together. Uh, we lost contact with each other in the year 2011, right after we went and saw the movie Thor together. And so on this podcast, we will be catching up with each other and all of the movies that we missed seeing together and fighting over for the last uh, 10 years, starting with Thor. That episode dropped uh, this week. You can find it on all the platforms where you can find uh, this podcast, uh, and you can also find it on Twitter at catching up 2011 and also on uh, Facebook at catching up pod, um, not at slash catching up pod. So catching and if up you go Aaron, to that Facebook page and you're really confused when you look at the past post, that's because Daniel took over the previous movie takes podcast page. I actually deleted everything from that. So Ooh. what about the historical record, Daniel? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we the watch YouTube, movies and the, U- we talk the YouTube, about them. the YouTube page is still active. I discovered that, so those videos are still out there in the ether. I didn't so, take them down. You what? I didn't take them down. I know, yeah. like they're still up there. So you can you can watch uh, me and uh, Crow from the year 2016 discussing movies like uh, whatever. Oh, Chinatown. We did Chinatown. Um, uh, was the, uh, the bicycle one what was that called bicycle thief bicycle thief yeah that was a good movie yeah so the, 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 those are out there if you want to but i don't encourage you to but yeah catching up with aaron and daniel my new podcast please check it out um share it with your movie friends like i said the first the first movie we did was thor the next one is x-men first class so watch x-men first class and then check out that episode in about two weeks when we release it so uh, anyway, I'm Dan McFadden. This has been Dropping the Hammer with Dan McFadden. This was a great time with Daryl and Phil. Uh, uh, there was part of me that, think, that thought we wouldn't be able to, to get to talk about a Bubba Wallace win this year, uh, but we got to do it. It was awesome. It's a huge moment for the sport. And um, I'm glad we guys could have you here to talk about it. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. I'm Dan McFadden. Thank you for listening. Have a great weekend. That was great. I had fun. That was a lot of I fun, man. Too. That was great. So I, I should have asked this, like, w- w- like in April, the last time we recorded, like, what, what was the percentage you would have given to Bubba winning this year? About a ten percent chance. You know, anything can happen at these plate tracks. That's where I thought it would come. He, I yeah. mean, he and he almost got it at uh, Daytona if they hadn't shuffled him out. Yeah. Like, yeah, well, let's see. Because that, that I figured it would probably, ha- if it did happen this year, it was going to happen on a plate track, or it might have happened at, like we said, Martinsville. But, um, yeah, I guess if you do the the math on that, whatever, four and the 36, or how many ever. But either way, it, it was a low percentage. But I, I think I was more hoping that they would just be consistent than worrying about wins. And I think they kind of ran into a little bit of a, a lofty expectation when MJ went and said, hey, let's go get two wins. And I'm like, it's not how it works. <laughs> no, this is not how it works. Don't embarrass yourself. You've already done that with the basketball team. Now MJ <laughs> sitting up in the corner smoking a stogie going, what about now (laughs) one we're waiting on number two he's gonna have to wait a little bit for number two i think especially (laughs) with the playoffs heating up yep i had to remind myself that uh the the starting orders each week in the playoffs starts with everyone's still in the playoffs first and then everyone's like oh bubba's not gonna benefit (laughs) from this very much like i looked oh 15th all right. <laughs> so, <I'm> so mad. <laughs> <laughs> but like, ho- like hopefully, like again, like we said, Mark, that that's that. He, like he led twenty six. 
23 laps yeah, yeah. In the spring in the spring race yep. and that was on old tires uh stayed out in front of everyone so and a mike wheeler setup <laughs> oh I, uh, I i i i don't I, I don't want to like feel bad for Mike Wheeler, but I feel bad for Mike Wheeler. Oh, and this is one thing I meant to bring up on the uh, cast, but um, you know, we do racing spaces on Twitter, and JR Houston is uh, one of the guys on Bubba's crew that stops in. And he was last night, he basically explained that, you know, uh, basically wheels was an lfr holdover uh he yep. was the competition director last year for lfr uh when christopher bell i think i don't know if it was jason burdett was his crew chief last year uh but he was a competition director then and then they asked him would he like to stay on for 2311 and then they asked him, did he want to be a crew chief? So a lot of the people that are on that roster are uh, LFR holdovers. So, you know, that meant a lot to those guys. Because like they said, they've known every time that they go to a super speedway track, they have a chance where they can, you know, win or do good. And it was just interesting for him to, you know, talk about the guys that had been there for a while. And, uh, you know, even Booty, Booty was... Uh, I think he was the setup guy for uh, for LFR last year, and then moved over into that this year too. So, yeah, it was just it was interesting for him to say, you know, how many people that got held over and how they felt about it, and then there were people that ended up leaving that probably now regret leaving. But uh, yeah, so it, it was it's well, good. We- we, yeah, we talked about it on here, like, you know, when the switch was first announced, like, Wheeler, like, he is a former Denny Hamlin crew chief, but and I had to think, like, this team came together so quickly, you, you need you need somebody you have a history with, an understanding of, to put into that slot, and hey, Mike Wheeler, um, it, I mean, it, it didn't work out for the first 20 20- seven or so races of the year mm-hmm. um but hey here we are yeah. here we are <laughs> so um uh I, i'm it's gonna be interesting to see what happens how, how, how things like they have to keep booty on his crew chief right for next year they, they gotta they keep have- booty barker as much i mean they have to um keep booty barker in that seat uh for as long as they can like that partnership you listen to him on the radio it's night and day between when wheeler him and wheeler were uh together yeah plus it's an amazing name whenever they make the days of thunder sequel based on bubba wallace yes yes (laughs) oh god that that, that, that will that will be the sequel that 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 will be it that will be the days of thunder sequel (laughs) i'm serious seriously i mean the the first one you had those threads of you know few drivers but you know i know people want it jeff gordon and and it, it was representative of that era that, so that, colt no colt trickles tim richmond that's who he is yeah, yeah. but anyway but it, it's representative of that era that kind of yeah. came in with him and we, we just skipped over you know two decades and then now or three decades i guess and then now we're coming into the hopefully this new era new car and everything so we do a oh. reboot not a not a not a remake a reboot of the days of thunder series days of thunder 2 electric boogaloo and um electric booty loop <laughs> and um and we basically you know tell the we, this time we're just going to convert we're going to do like it's gonna be like space jam so it'll be bubba wallace playing bubba wallace Oops. um and and names changed only to protect the innocent except for booty barker <laughs> yes. because that's a great name um let's well, see this is daryl walls jr <laughs> <laughs> yeah but first before we get that we're, we're gonna acting keep... name is daryl walls jr kind of like the dwayne johnson <laughs> yeah, he, yes. he's still the rock but hey hey aren't you the rock no i'm dwayne johnson so the rock <laughs> but, but before we get that we're gonna get the 
romantic comedy produced by Will Smith and the Chainsmokers. Oh, that, God. That's what we're going to get. And oh, like, is that still happening? It's still happening. It was only announced like a month or two ago. <laughs> Well, you know, a month or two ago feels like two years ago at this rate. So, but really like, does. but like, if you read the plot synopsis, like it was fifty percent, like the plot or premise of the crew. Um, so I was like, so we're just we're, we're already recycling the sitcom that got canceled after one season. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. I'll, Wait, they canceled it. Oh yeah, that's not yeah, it's not coming. Yeah, down. the crew got canceled. No. So oh, like that. Phil or, Phil, don't cry. Don't, don't cry on me, Phil. Don't, don't do it. Phil, I, you cry, I'll cry. Don't do it. <laughs> okay, so do you guys want to see what the face of jealousy looks like? Yes. yes. Look at watch Daniel's face while I show him what just came uh, in. The uh, it, it came in. Oh, I hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, that, nice heavy metal Hot Wheels car. Well, I, I got the racing William champions Byr- car. I got the William Byron one from two years ago, the Sun 500. So I'm kind of good. But if any of you guys want to get me the, the, the pack of Days of Thunder cars that came out in 1990 for Christmas, I'd appreciate <laughs> it. So I'll scour eBay. 